So we're speaking about the month of Elul, and we're saying that the, the big problem with Judaism is feeling. You, you have to feel <clears throat> Hashem. <clears throat> feeling. And, it's, and when a person feels God, maybe at first you have no idea what you're feeling, but you do feel, one sign, you do feel the goodness of doing a commandment and the badness of doing a sin that you feel. It's a, a, like a, a, a long person doesn't know how much he loves his parents <clears throat> or whatever until they're gone. Right? The child has homesickness. He goes to the camp. He's all happy. He goes to him after a day. Homesick. What's he homesick? He doesn't know how much he really loves his home and he really feels himself at home. He doesn't feel, when he's at home, he doesn't feel love. He just feels himself. He can just be himself. The same thing, we don't really feel how much we love Hashem <clears throat> until we're separated from Hashem. That's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. But what <clears throat> says, what happens if a person does, doesn't feel this? He says, well, that's the month of Elul. The month of Elul, you make a, a uh, an accounting <clears throat> of yourself exactly what am I doing wrong? You know, maybe I'm doing, if it wouldn't be for the Rebbe, I would think I'm doing nothing wrong whatsoever. I, so I don't feel what's the big deal, right? What's wrong with being inside? I'm not, I'm not being insensitive. That's just me. That's just who I am. You don't know anything. <clears throat> it's like a, like a, uh, a person who doesn't know anything about music and he, he goes to a concert and one of the players is playing off tune and he's playing, well, he doesn't feel anything wrong. He doesn't understand. As soon as he starts to understand, then he realizes something is going wrong. And he's even great, he can, you know, oh, you know, the second violin is missing. <clears throat> but if he doesn't know, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't feel anything. It, so that's Chabad, is, the idea of Chabad is to, to let you know what you're supposed to be feeling and, and to help you try to think properly and to contemplate properly so you start to feel Godliness, and if you don't feel godliness, so then you should ask for mercy. Help me, Hashem, to feel. And then if that doesn't work, so you should try to, um, you know, refrain from bad things. Maybe your actions are not good. Maybe your speeches is, is wrong. Maybe your your thoughts are all confused. You have to at least try to get rid of the bad things. Uh, get rid of the bad things that you do. How you speak improperly. How you think improperly. And learn Torah. That helps give charity. Start talking good things. What happens if you do all that and nothing helps? It says, a person should feel godliness. Ah, but Hainu says, because well, that's the nature of a, of a Jew. Teva Adam, the nature of a person is Teva Adam. Lo, I feel it's supporting If even the, this toenail hurts, <clears throat> then because he hits it on a stone, so he feels it in his head. So it also, we should also feel the fact that we're not attached to Hashem properly. We're not, you miss putting out the fill in one day, you should feel bad. You miss every day, you should really feel bad. Uh, so why don't we feel bad? It says, as we're attached to Hashem, like a toe is attached to a person. So you stub your toe. But what happens if the toe gets cut off? When the toe... <laughs> this is only when the toe is still attached, but when it gets cut off, so then the brain doesn't feel the pain in the toe. In fact, there is no pain. Because <clears throat> it's cut off from its source. Also, we are joined to God. Therefore, we should feel the pain and the blemish if something goes wrong. But Radnu Bagalas were in exile. What's in exile? Nitsutzalakus, the spark of godliness. Kiafa pi shechata, even though he's doing a sin, Yisraelu, he's a Jew. And he's got a spark of godliness inside. A Jew is different. This spark of godliness never goes out. From a Jew, it's always attached. Elishu Bagalot, it's just an exile. <clears throat> it's like a, 
of a person that's really drunk, so he can stub his toe and it doesn't feel anything. But the fact of the matter is, is that the pain is still there. It's still there. If somebody says, hey, look at your toe, you see what's going on? Oh, wow, it's all bloody. What's going on all of a sudden? Wow, it hurts. Below, not only that, Nevertheless, not only is this little point of Judaism still inside of him, but it's really ruling inside of him. That's what says a sar, this little, this Judaism, this point of godliness, which is inside of every Jew, that's called ale. And what that's what rules, that's what's dominant in his personality. It's called sar. Sar means a ruler, ale. We talked about that before. So you can see like you have these non-religious Jews. I remember there was once a really sort of a very famous case, one of the the big uh, ministers in, in Israel, a totally, totally not religious, anti-religious Jew. And somebody, they were talking, two people were talking, and they said, he's not a Jew, he's not, he doesn't do anything, he's not Jewish. And the, 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 the reporter, somehow or then they left a, a microphone open. It happened to be one of these unidirectional microphones from the news, and they wanted to hear what they were saying. So they pointed this thing, and, heard, and this fellow that they were talking about Totally not. He got so angry and he said, I'm not who are you to judge me of this? He didn't care anything about it. He hated the religious people, this guy. Shehu, <clears throat> Yisrael, this is the level of Yisrael now. Key, because Enu Dome, Milo Sasar, Emioso, Beshevi, La Milo Sahedia. Like we said, what do we say? What rules inside of a Jew? This connection to God. He says, that's what really rules. But sometimes this connection to God this, that rules over him can be imprisonment. So it's, it's like you take the, the president of the United States and put him in jail, which that would be a pretty good thing if they did that, no? Put him in jail. So he's not the president anymore. But is he president? He's not president, right? He, he still is president, but he can't really do anything. The same thing, this godly feeling that rules is the dominant feeling in the identity of every Jew, this thing called ale. This is dominant in every single Jew, but it's in prison, so it can't. Kiyadayan nikar v'yadua. Sorry, there was that. Yeah. It says the sorry he can't do anything, but nevertheless he still is a minister. He still is the president of the United States. Put him into prison, and he still is there. He just can't function. Same thing. This Jewish feeling inside of you, maybe it's not functioning, but it's still there. Ki Adai and Nikar, because you can still see the Mila, the highness of this president. But in one motion, it can transform from one end to the other totally. Lachzor Bakad Musa. Right? There's, there's a, countless stories about this now in Israel and, and especially in Russia. You get in Russia, there's already suppressed Judaism 70 years. So people's parents didn't know and their grandparents didn't know they were Jewish. They wouldn't talk to <clears throat> and if they were, they didn't know what it meant. And all of a sudden, the person just, he hears a, a Jewish song or something happens or he, somebody tells him, hey, you know, your grandmother was Jewish. And suddenly, all of a sudden, he flips. He says, wow, I'm a Jew. I didn't know it. I'm telling you, I was I, I was part of an organization once. They used to even work for my house that they used to give free circumcisions to older Russians because all these Russians came out. None of them were circumcised. Ask a Russian what is what his Jewish name is, right? What's your name? Vladimir. So what's your name is Vladimir? What's your Hebrew name? Niznayu. You don't, you don't, I don't know. I haven't got any Hebrew name. If he doesn't have a Hebrew name, that's a pretty good sign that he wasn't circumcised because the Hebrew name is given when he's circumcised. There were thousands, tens of thousands, who knows how many of Jews in Russia, millions, and nobody got circumcised. Who got circumcised, right, in Russia? And all of a sudden, somebody told you you're Jewish. Oh, it just woke up. They're willing to make a circumcision. Seventy years old, eighty years. This is the, what we're trying to wake up in the month of Elul. It's by us also, because there's no end to this feeling of sensitivity to the Creator and what's right in them. Ah, but Masha, you know, But sometimes a person cannot feel this pain. Sometimes it. The, the blemish, the, the wound is so deep that a person can get totally cut off from his source. He's blemished himself so much that he's finished. 
Uh, finished? Not exactly. When we say, I Rabbi Yore Rachamim Yoter, when a person thinks, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm totally cut off from God. I don't feel anything whatsoever. So you know what? Let's leave it that way. He says, no, it doesn't work. Somehow or other, <clears throat> he reads a book. Somebody tells him something happens. This will cause him to arouse even greater mercy. Help me, God. I, 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 don't, I don't even want help. Amy Yosha Eno Margish, even though he doesn't feel the great mercy on himself. Al Mamr, like it says, Barachamecha Rabbi Rachem Alin. There's a story that once someone came into the Tzemach Tzedek. I don't know if it was a Chassid or it was a nun. Anyway, he came into the Tzemach Tzedek, the third Rebbe of Chabad, and he said, Rebbe, I want, uh, I want you to know I, I don't keep Torah and the commandments. I look like a chassid. I'm dressed up, but the fact is I don't do anything. And so the Rebbe said, um, so you don't do anything. What do you, what do you want from me? He says, well, I, I want to start to feel. I see everybody else's feelings. So he says, if you want to, so, so do it. Start to feel, start to do the commandments. He says, no, it's not that I want to. It's not, I don't, I don't want to. That's why I'm coming with you. I, I, would, I want to want. So the Rebbe says, so if you if you want to want, so then just do the commandments. He says, no, it's not, not exactly right. I don't really want to want. The reason I'm here is because I want to want to want. So the Rebbe said, okay, so there's no problem. This went on until about 10 times the person says, no, I, I want. He went deeper and deeper inside of himself. Where is it coming from? I want to want to want to want. And he passed out. It was somewhere down deep inside, says God does all sorts of tricks. He says, Lo menu nidach, that even the most pushed away person won't be pushed away. The farthest person won't be far. This is the tremendous mercy, right? A person comes in and says, I don't feel anything. I'm not Jewish. I don't care about Judaism. It says, so you really need a blessing. You really need a blessing. You don't feel it at all. Not at all. I think the whole thing is a big bluff. Don't feel it. I told you the story yesterday, and I'll tell you very in a very short one. Did I tell it to you? I don't remember. I listened yesterday to a, 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 a um, to um, a video of Rabbi Mengel, and he was talking about being in the Holocaust. Anyway, the point is, is that he amazingly got out of the Holocaust. He was only ten years old when he was taken in, and he went one Friday to buy uh, just to, to sort of you know walk around with his wife in in Manhattan. They went. And there was a one person, there was the one street called Orchard Street. And they went there to, things are very cheap and inexpensive and good. And they were just going, they weren't intending to buy anything. Just look, you know, see the price, maybe come back later. Some Jewish man comes over to him. This must have been like in the, in, in, in the 60s somewhere. And he says, come on, come buy a shirt, buy a shirt. He says, I haven't got time. I have to be back for Shabbos. And the man said, ah, Shabbos is so stupid. There's no Shabbos, there's no God, there's no Torah doesn't make any difference. You would have seen what I saw. You wouldn't believe in God also. And he rolls up his sleeve, shows him his numbers, that he was in Auschwitz. He said, what, which camp, camp were you in? He says, I was in Auschwitz. That's what I saw. You don't know. So Rabbi um, uh, Mangel, he was, I guess, a young man at the time. You know, he was in his 30s. So he rolled up his sleeve and he said, I was also in Auschwitz. He said, how could you have possibly been in Auschwitz? You know? He says, well, I was 10 years old when I went there. So I saw everything that you saw, and I still believe in God. So the person just went into his office, put his head down, right? And he was just deep in thought, didn't want anything. He came back later on, several weeks later, and the man had sold his store. He sold his store, and then he was told that he moved to someplace where he could keep shopping. The point is, is that deep down inside of every Jew, that's where it's there. And even if the Jew is totally cut off, so he has to have greater mercy. So God sent Rabbi Mangel exactly the right person that he had also a number on his arm and the person they got into this conversation exactly in order to make this person arouse his Judaism. Perush, that's what it means. We don't understand how great God's mercy is on us. This is the aspect of Yaakov that goes from one end to the other, which we talked about last time. What happens if you pray? 
and you say, Hashem, have mercy on me. I have to have mercy. I don't even want mercy. That's how far away I am from you. I just want to want, want to want to want. I want to want to want to want. But help me, Hashem. It says, if this doesn't help, and you still feel the same distance from God, Hine Zota Eitzah Yehuta. It says, Haroah B'Shoshanin. It says, there's a roar that the Jewish people, it says, Bozi Lagani Achosi Kala, Haroah B'Shoshanin. It grazes in the roses. It says the Zohar, the rose, it transforms from the color red to the color white by means of fire. So you got to get a little bit severe with yourself. It says, it says, if your sins are like red, God who said, I'll make them white like snow. That a sin is called red. And also all the thoughts, speech, action, speech, and thought. Everything that's in the world. It's all so-called Adam. The whole world is called Edom. Edom is another name for like Rome or for the non-Jews called Edom. Edom was the, the another name, it was uh, Esau was called Edom, it says. <coughs> Esau was the brother of Jacob and he was like the source of all the the um, one sort of, Ash, of, of uh, European anti-Semitism was called that one. The fee because Shehem and Machshav was a Yetzer a person that gets sunk in all sorts of thoughts about the world and talking about the world and doing things in the world. So all of those things, that's called Edom. It's not saying you should get, get out of the world. Exactly the opposite. God wants us to be in the world. right? That's why he gave us the land of Israel. We should be in the world. God kept got very angry when the, the, the Jews didn't want to go into the land of Israel. But the fact of the matter is, is that we have to be the bosses of the land, not the land is the boss over us. See, a person gets too involved in the world, <clears throat> says that the world is called Edom. Another name is called Rome. Edom, the world starts ruling over you. That's called Edom. That's called red. Red alert. But it's possible to turn that all to white. Shu'u Bechinas, this is the level of Keshele Yalbino, by means of this, of, of what fire? What type of fire are you supposed to do? What type of fire? Sometimes our only hope is fire. What is fire? We tried prayer, we tried asking for mercy, we tried learning Torah, we tried doing good deeds. We try to, what do we need now? Fire. What's fire? Says the Rebbe, there's two types of fire. There's fire from above and there's fire from below. Eishelamayla, fire from above, not everybody merits this. That's a super enthusiasm that a person gets and he suddenly feels God, he knows God, like they used to go to the Holy Temple, you feel this tremendous enthusiasm, inspiration <clears throat> from the Creator. That's from above. Not everybody gets that. Now we don't have a temple, etc. Like I told you, there's a lot of people, some people get it temporarily. I told you the story of somebody, he went by the Rebbe, I heard the fellow tell the story. He, he was working with this Yemenite, Israeli Yemenite Jew that had tattoos and earrings and long hair and everything. Totally rejected anything that limited him, especially Judaism. And somehow this fellow took him by the Rebbe. He went by the Rebbe just to see, you know, he was sort of bored. He went by the Rebbe. The Rebbe just gave him a dollar and said, like, Prachavatzlacha. He immediately left, made a beeline straight, went to the barbers, cut off his hair. He had this Rasta hair do, cut off as it took off of his, of his earrings, immediately went home, 
changed his clothes, regular clothes, and he started to keep Shabbos eating kosher. Just something happened. All of a sudden, wow, I'm a Jew. Ah, that's the fire from above. And it, a lot of times it doesn't last that long also. Because <clears throat> it's, it's not yours. Ah, but Eishel, Amata, there's fire that comes from below. That's the end of Sigufin. Sometimes a person has to do a little bit of what's called self-mortification. The Hasidim did not do this, but uh, the Alter Rebbe is the ultimate Hasid. So, and fasts. Not to eat what you want. Rabbi Mendel Futaba said, it says in the Tanya that King David killed his selfish impulses, his Yetzir Hora, by fasting. It says right in the first chapter of the Tanya. Rabbi Mendel Futaba told me, uh, my teacher, he said, that how did he, what do you mean by fasting? That he, he didn't eat, he didn't speak. He didn't speak negative things. He didn't think. He made his Yetzir Hora fast. He didn't do what his selfish impulse pushed him, urged him to do. That's what he means fasting. But I don't know if that's actually what, it, if that's what is intended here. But in any case, it means not eating what you want. And also you can fast. It says you can fast until midday, right? Until, until 12 o'clock. You can do fast of hours. The idea is, is not doing what you want. Not saying what you want and not even thinking what you want. To realize you are not God. And this sometimes is very painful and sometimes it's very, very difficult. We're not talking about endangering your health or your life. You know, so some you're with your friends, you just urge to tell a good joke. You got it right at the tips. You always, you have to always make comments, always make jokes. Don't do it. Now hold yourself back, right? Force yourself to only say good things. You're a very cynical person. You love to say bad things about people. It's, oh, everybody laughs. But as then, your ear of then God will shine his face on you, and you'll have this level of the inside, pun him, like we said before. Oh, ach, but oh, the ach has one more thing. So this is the month of El. We're preparing for the king. We're preparing to go into the palace. And God is coming out and giving us a palace prep course. How that we can be the special people that go in because that's what every Jew is, we said. To go into the palace on Rosh Hashanah. Ah, but Orach has this one more thing. You have to put, take this advice to your soul. What it says, Another time for Song of Songs. Worthwhile to read Song of Songs. Worthwhile. It's only eight chapters long. Song of Songs, written by King Solomon. Shir Asher Asher Lishlomo. I will, so it says, in the marketplaces and in the streets, I search for the one that my soul loves until I found the one my soul loves. I hugged him and I didn't let him go. I, then I grabbed onto him and I didn't let him go until he brings me El Beit Imi back to my the house of my mother, the El Cheder Horasi until the room where I was born. Does that make sense? The whole book of the Song of Songs makes no sense. It makes no simple sense. It's all talking about the love relationship between God and the Jewish people and the Jewish people and God. So as a result, it's not talking about normal language. Because the, the you know the majority of the world doesn't even think God exists, and for sure you know that we love Him. Oh, we love Him. We're searching for Him. It says not only that we love Him, He loves us. In fact, He loves us even more than we love Him. So that's what King Solomon is saying. You can look in the Song of Songs to see what it, Rashi interprets it. The simple meaning is, <clears throat> I. In the marketplaces and the, the streets, I searched for the one I, my soul loves until I found the one my soul loves. I grabbed onto him and I did not let go until he brought me into the house of my mother and the room that I was born or conceived. 
So what's going on over here? What is, what is King Solomon talking about? He's searching in the streets and in the roads for the one that his soul loves until he found the one that his soul loves. He repeats it again. His soul loves. I grabbed onto him. I didn't let him go until he brought me back to the house of my mother and to the room where I was conceived and I was born. Perish, what does it mean? It says, this is kavar, that I already loved. The one who I already loved in the past. Israel, the Jewish people, rose up in God's thought. But we don't love God now. We just love God in the past. It says, you have no idea how much you love God. The Jewish people rose up in God's thought, a kaduma, before he created the world. This is the level which is called tahorahi. We, there's a prayer we say in the morning. The soul that you gave me is pure. You created it, you formed it. You blew it into me. It says, that's tahorahi, that's the essence of the Jewish soul. Before we talked about the level of ale. Kodem atabarasa, this is before you created it, etc. Like we said in another mimer, the beginning is to this level, nimshach ba'ora ganuz, this level, this level which <clears throat> God loves, God loved, that it was there before the world was created. It rose up in God's thought. And it's the reason for the whole creation. This is a tremendously deep secret. The Jews are here. The world was created for the Jews. Not that the Jews should buy cars and that they, all the non-Jews should shine their shoes or something like that. that that's not at, at all the point. If the non-Jews want to shine their shoes, they, they can do it. But that's not the, the point. The point is the Jews are here in order to serve the Creator and to teach everyone how to serve the Creator. When that happens, then the world will fall into proper order. Everyone will see that there's a Creator. That there's a God and that there's an instruction book for the Creator. It's the Torah. That's even above the creation. And even above that is the Jewish souls. That's why it says Moses broke the tablets in order to save the Jews. The Jews are in, in a, a deeper, a more essential level of godliness than the creation and even than, than the Torah. And inside of the essence of every Jew, this level that God loves them, there is what's called a ganuz, a concealed light. This is Ava Mesutera. This is this <clears throat> hidden love that we talked about before, this level of ale. Inside of every do Yisra El. This is this concealed love. <clears throat> like we said before, when we talked about God created the light. Remember, we talked about this in the first day, God created the light, and he saw the light that he told that it was good. What does it mean good? That it was good to conceal. That's the whole idea of creating the world. God wanted to create, hide over this one essence light of himself. So that we would come to a higher level and serve God. I mean, the whole thing makes no sense. That's the that's the secrets of the Torah. That exactly is the secrets of the Torah. That's above sense. That's what it means that my soul, that my soul loved. That my soul in the past. What do you mean in the past? In the past, before the world was created. It doesn't mean that the soul doesn't love God now. It's just trying to tell you the where did this love originates. It's there from before the world. The world is real. Well, the love of the Jews to God is infinitely more real. That's why Jews were willing to die on the stake. They were willing to get burned and, and to die for Hashem. Not because they wanted to go to heaven. They didn't care about heaven and they didn't care about, they wanted to serve God, that's all. If it meant getting burned, they got burned. If it meant getting a million dollars, they got a million dollars. If it meant being a king, they would be a king. If it meant being a slave, they'd be a slave. All they want is just what God wants. Love. That's what it says, like we said before, about this level of Eitan. Remember we learned last week, Eitan Ezrachi. We learned that the essence of the Jewish soul is called Eitan. There's a lot of different names. 
So we don't know who we are. We don't know what God is. We don't know really what the world is. And we act like we do. We act like we're God and we understand the whole thing. That's the month of Elo to come to make us realize that we are not God. We are creations of God. God loves us. And that's the purpose of the Jewish people to reveal this to everyone because the Jewish people are the only ones that really have this deep, essential, intimate connection with the creator of the universe, the giver of the Torah. Okay, so what's King Solomon saying? I, I was going in the streets and in the, in the marketplaces. Ah, here's me. There are sometimes there are people that it's lost. And so before we had the metaphor of getting the, the person's head cut off, it's low. And this says, Abaksha, I have to look for it. I have to look for the one who my soul loved. This level of looking, we said before, you have to look where you lost it. Look at your personality. Look at how you react to everything. Look at how you're improperly trying to assert your rulership and kingship over the world, and you're not a king. <clears throat> this, where you have to look for this love, this lost love, in the marketplaces and the rest in the, in the streets, the place where you lost it. Ah, we talked. We remember we talked about that before. Misham, we talked about. You have to look from there. Ah, but ah, gam im Even if you find this love, this concealed love, you find it. Hine luis kaimubo or Hashem, it won't last for long. Built kalim unless you have vessels. Because this causes the light to go away. Suddenly the person feels, wow, I'm a Jew. Okay, so what does it mean, I'm a Jew? Uh, I'm a Jew. He goes out and he buys a necklace, says chai around it, and you know, a, a Jewish star, whatever it is, and he puts it out, and I'll leave it out. Right? I'll leave it out, or I won't close my shirt, though, so everybody will see my chai. Okay, so that's nice. That's a, that's a nice thing. But that's not really how you express Judaism. You know, you want to wear this thing around your neck, but it's not. That's not the expression of Judaism. It's an expression that the, you know of, uh, of of something. You know, maybe maybe some way it is, but that's not the way God wants you to express Judaism. The way God wants you to express Judaism is Torah and the commandments. Lochena, it's a so kalim. How do you make vessels in order to hold on to this love of God? How can you make vessels for this light of God? They are the letters of the Torah. The letters of the Torah, that's the vessels. Go to your local Chabad house and join a class of learning Torah. Beit Imi, that's the Torah. This is the written Torah. The Cheder Harati, and the place where I was conceived, this is what's called the Oral Torah. Kamosh like it says, Kiyavaya Lokecha Eish Ochla, like it says, God is a devouring fire. <clears throat> so when you learn these words of Torah, is that gives the fire what to grab onto? Because shame, just like it's impossible for fire to grab on, to, for a fire to exist without a wick, or some wood or something to hold on to, that what King Solomon says, I will grab onto the one that I love, this essence of my soul, that I feel this arousal, this identity, I'm a Jew, but you have to grab onto it. How do you grab onto it? The way to grab onto it and not let go, you have to bring them into, what does it say? The place, my mother's house and the place where I was born. Beiti, me, my mother's house and the place, my mother's house, that's called the written Torah. And the place where I was born, that's the oral Torah. A lot of times it says the difference, it says differently. It says the house of my mother, that's the oral Torah. And the written Torah is the source of it. But really the fact of the matter is, is that the oral Torah is much higher because that's the oral Torah. And those the, the Talmud, the Mishnah, the Midrash, all the things that the enemies of Judaism always try to go against to destroy Judaism is the, the rabbis and the, the oral Torah, what's called the oral Torah, the tr tradition, they call it the tradition, which is very, very misleading. 
It certainly is not the oral tradition. This is very misleading. And I would even say to the point that it's very evil. It's not a tradition. In a way, the written Torah comes from the oral Torah. The oral Torah, that's God's will. That's what God wants us to do. And the Torah that we have, that's the means. That's the holds on to the, 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 the it's shorthand for what we really, God wants us to do. That's the oral Torah. When you get rid of the oral Torah, the Talmud, the Mishnah, you have nothing, there's no laws. Do what you want. You can, you can excuse anything, right? You just have the written Torah and you think that you are the big rabbi, you can interpret everything. So then everything goes. Everything goes. The, 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 what, what's wrong with killing? What's wrong with stealing? What's wrong with robbing? What's wrong with idolatry? Like it says, like it says in the Zohar, on the sentence, Haroa b'shoshanim, Haroa b'shoshanim, that's what we said before, that was a red row, shoshanim. There's another explanation, shoshanim, shoshanim, shoshanim malachas, v'shinantam, that they learn Torah. That's the Jewish people. Lachim, and therefore, conceive, it says, Haroa, therefore it says that we Jewish people, we are like, we Jewish people, we're our, Shepherding, we're grazing. Haroa, we're the great. The Haroa also means the shepherd. Haroa, the shepherd in the roses. The Jewish people are called also the shepherd because the Jewish people they provide food for God. Yisrael mafarnasim laviim shebeshamayim. We provide for God. Does that make any sense? Well, that's the whole holy temple. Holy Temple, it says, Korbani Lachmi, that the sacrifices were called God's bread, God's food. Reach Nichochi, it's a pleasure. God gets pleasure from the sacrifices. Well, he gets pleasure. That's just an example. He gets God really gets pleasure anytime we do anything. Sacrifices are special. It says the Jewish people actually provide for their Father in heaven. Because by means of learning the Torah, and working hard and understanding the Torah, which the Torah is the will of God, is by means of this, God's will, I see Ruach, brings our will, and then again, our will, it evokes God's will, and it even brings the higher will of God, that it's revealed in the person who's learning Torah, the inner will of God. God. That's what the Torah has the ability to do. Of course, if you just learn Torah in university, or you learn Torah just in order to uh, conquer the Torah, so then you don't feel this godliness. All you really feel is yourself. But if you learn the Torah in order that the Torah should conquer you, in other words, you refeel that the Torah is really the essence of your life. The same God that's keeping you alive and creating you every moment. That's the God that's giving the Torah every moment. And the Torah is even higher. It's even deeper. It's the reason why you're here. When a person learns the Torah, says it gives God pleasure. Just like when a person eats. When a person eats food, that's what sacrifices is where God's food. So the Torah is also God's food. When a person eats, he joins his soul with his body. She's pashtu bo kochos nafsho berachova. That when a person, before a person eats, as he's a, 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 he could get so weak, he could almost die. Right? Like I said, I heard this video from Rabbi Mangel yesterday. He said that he, they made this walk in the, end of the, in the end of the war. So they emptied out Auschwitz. They made everybody on this death march. So they had to just march. And the only thing they had to eat was the snow on the ground. They could bend down. And he said that amazingly, some SS man came over to him. This is when he already decided that he was finished. He, he was going to step out of line and they would shoot him. He said that some SS man came and he said, uh, don't uh, be strong. And he gave him to drink from his coffee in his canteen. And he said, as soon as he drank a little bit of that coffee and it was sweet, he said he felt just like a whole new life just came through his whole body. And this lasted, of course, once a day or whatever. We give him to that says that's food. The Torah is the food of God, so to speak. When the Jewish people learn Torah and they learn it in the proper attitude, they provide food for God in heaven. 
Al Yudei Torah by means of the Torah and the commandments that they do, because the Torah and the commandments, they are God's will. The Ruach, I see Ruach, Vem Sheikh Ruach. And when we do God's will, so God then comes and gives us inspiration. And then even a higher inspiration. That there is revealed this level of God's upper will inside of us in an internal way. By means of the letters of the Torah. What happens when God is revealed, right? It says that if Adam hadn't sinned, so people would live forever. What does it mean they would live forever? They would just be in this tremendous high and everybody's faces would be glowing all the time. No, they would just be living. They would just be alive all the time and they would feel the creator. They would feel the responsibility. They would feel that they're really, really important to God. Everyone would have this feeling, amazing feeling, right? When you feel that you're, when you're appreciated and somebody likes you and what you're doing is great and they say, wow, you are just, and you see the person is sincere, it makes you feel good. Right? Someone says, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. it. makes you feel good. Well, what? imagine if God does it to you. God says, listen, you are very important. You are wonderful. I'm so happy that I created you and that I'm creating you all the time. A person feels that's the, what it means to feel good. Godliness. It says when a person learns the Torah, as this draws down godliness to a person. Also the same thing, the commandments. Also giving charity. Shumira sachesed. It means you have no worries. You, you can be a, 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 a how do you say, a, 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 you feel an important person. You're important to God. Everything you do, every thought that you have. Therefore, like, like Professor Victor Frankl says, it could be the last moment of a person's life. A person is sick. He's inca incapacitated. The attitude that he has in this terrible situation could be worth more than people who build big buildings and get their name in the paper because you're, you're dealing directly with God. You're doing your responsibility. You can't know. This is the external vessel of the light and the love, what's in the inside. Like it says, This is this inner love that every Jew has that's connected to the Torah. And that's this level of that we provide, we are the shepherd, we provide God Shoshani, what's Shoshani means learning Torah, the Torah that we learn, and that's the month of Elul. The thirteen attributes of mercy says that the rose has thirteen petals. Pet, pet, petals on a rose. That's what it says. Thirteen petaled rose. That's the thirteen attributes of God's mercy, and it's also the thirteen attributes that the Torah is learned by. Rabbi Ishmael, if you look in. In the prayer books, right before we start praying, this is either the thirteen attributes, the thirteen methods that the Torah is learned by, principles. So by learning Torah, this provides for God. This is the whole idea of the month of Elul. That that's the whole thing of the month of Elul, feeling this love of God. Perush ki laor panei Hashem, which is the light, haor yeshnei kedem, there's two Vessels, she'em Torah and Chesed. That's what it says. Ki bo'or ponecha natata lonu Torah t'chayim va'avat Chesed. This is the, the light of God's face. There's two vessels for this. The Torah and the commandments, charity and etc. Now let's learn the Sicha of the Rebbe. Devar Malchut. Let us learn the Devar Malchut of the Rebbe. How happy we are that we can be learning this amazing, amazing stuff. Oh, we didn't sound the shofar. Here we go, Rabbis. Let's sound the shofar. I have a different shofar today. Oh, here's the shofar. Here we go. Ready? <coughs> Excuse me one second. <clears throat> 